Why did a math person have to buy me? I'm constantly looking at math. Okay. So we all have that sheet, right? And, and is that true? I didn't do this sheet yet? Have we looked at the sheet at all yet? Not really, right? I think I kind of might have pointed out some things, but um, so let's take a look. What's up? Oh, yeah, yeah. But I gave this to you so you can have it because it has all the steps explained. Okay. So there's two things on here that are going to be new that we haven't done yet. I don't think we've written the conclusion yet. And we also have to talk about what this thing is. But otherwise, we've discussed all the parts of this. This would be the sheet that I would have had sitting out next to me as I'm doing the hypothesis tests in the homework. And while I'm thinking about it, in chapter 9, 9 5 is where you have to do all five steps. Section 9.1, section 9.2, section 9.3, section 9.4, they all kind of break up and look at each step kind of individually. Does that sort of make sense? 9.5 is where there's a complete hypothesis test sitting. Okay. So let's look at this thing. Um, read through that real quick and, and see if somebody can tell me what the claim is. Tell me what the claim is. In English, you start with just English. And then we'll translate to mathish. That um, coyotes live longer. Coyotes in captivity live longer if they have more room to roam. Woof! That's right. And now you say live longer than what, and then what stat symbol will I use for that? Right? So that's how I'm going to translate it into mathish. So the claim is coyotes live longer if they you know, are given more room to roam in captivity. Now I want to capture that concisely. So uh, in this case, we're talking about an average, a mean, right? So we think the mean for coyotes that are given more room to roam is how related to what? Greater than? Say again? Which I tell you is what? Ten point fifteen. I love it. What number would never show up in this claim? What number never shows up when you're setting up your hypotheses? The number that comes from a sample. Because realistically, in real life, we're going to have a hypothesis first, and then we're going to go take the sample. Now, to be able to do a problem, I got to give you everything. But that twelve point four five number or any sample number has no place in the claim or the hypotheses because. It's what comes from the sample, and that's step four, right? I guess we. So all coyotes, we already know, in captivity, they live 10.15 years, and we're like, I think the ones that have more room will live longer. That kind of, on some levels, makes sense. We don't know if it's true. We just all like feel that way. So that's so that's where the clip. We think that the mean of those who have more room is going to be bigger than. The number of years for those, just all of the ones in captivity. Okay, I like it. Now, does somebody remember, or can somebody read? <laughs> Where does that go? And, and by the way, I'm sorry. This is from like the last book I used. This book uses the hoes and the haws. The last book I had used the hoes and the highs. Um, where does that claim go? Does it go in the null hypothesis, HO, or does it go into the alternate hypothesis, HA? Yeah, because it doesn't have equal, equal sign. Right? The, the, the thing you're going to put next to the null has to have an equal sign. So all you do, first step is just write the claim in Mathish, whatever the claim is. Then you step back and you go, does it have an equal sign? If it does, 
put it next to HO. It doesn't put it next to HO. And I discussed why that was. We had to make this process basically work no matter what. Right? We want this process to just work. So we built it such that we're always going to be trying to find evidence for this. And you guys remember, we can't really show evidence that something equals something using a sample. But we can show evidence that it's not equal to something somehow. Right? If our sample is just so far away, this evidence is not equal to that. But if our sample is close, that actually doesn't mean shit. I have no idea what that is. It could be that or it could be not that. I don't know. Can we stop for a minute? All right. So this is going to go there. So what's going to go next to the O or the HO? I don't want somebody to report me for a sample. Hopefully, y'all can take this in the lighthearted <laughs> nature. The lighthearted nature is intended. I always. Uh, U is less than or equal to? Yes, it's got to be the exact opposite of that. Okay. I like it. So what do you guys think? Is this going to be a one-tail test or a two-tail test? Two. One. <laughs> you covered all your things. Yeah, why will this be a one-tail test? Greater than, yeah. Where's my, my sample can only show evidence for H A if it's on one side, if it's above, if it's up here. So here's what we are given that the mean is, and to show that it doesn't look to be that, I've got to find a sample that is way up there. If I find a sample that is way the hell up there, that is evidence that that group has a mean above 10.15. That population, right? So, again, the whole idea is if I take a sample and I get 12.45, why can't I just stop there? Isn't that bigger than 10.15? Why can't I just stop? Aren't we done? Didn't we find bigger than 10.15? What's wrong with these stats, people? Why? Because where did we get 12.45? From a sample. You lost me at um, the hoe. Why did we do that? What Why do you did mean? we do the uh, less than or equal to 10 .1? So whenever there's so a claim, there's got to inherently be something that claim is fighting against. Okay, so it's just, is it always going to be the opposite? Yes. Okay. These so are always gonna, opposites. The book, now, now real quick, uh, in statistics, there's a feeling, some books and some teachers teach that the, the null hypothesis is always equal. In the book, the book is hilarious. The book sometimes does that and sometimes doesn't do that, which is, I just choose to look at it as if it's funny. I think some of the authors disagree, which students are not used to. You guys are not used to that. There are some unsettled aspects of statistics, and that's just one little thing. Of it. it doesn't change a damn thing. It's just, I think it should be. Right? So I happen to be in a camp where they should be opposite. And, and today you're going to see why I'm correct. I might be a little biased. I don't know. We'll see if you agree. Okay. Um, yeah, so those always are opposite. I love it. Because okay, if, if I find evidence that it is greater than 10.15, can't I say that that's evidence that it isn't at most 10.15, right? If I find evidence that it's bigger than 10.15, can't I also say that's evidence that it is not at most 10.15? Yeah. Because it looks like it's greater, right? So I want to capture both sides of the argument here. Okay. Okay. So how's everybody doing? And you're all like, we've done one step. God damn. But again, I'm talking a lot, as I do often. So this is not that long of a step, but just to understand it, think a while. Um, this should be very familiar, step B. What do you guys think? Can I use Z scores, T scores, or nothing? Why am I allowed to do anything? And again, you've got the notes you can read, but you should know this. Why am I allowed to do anything in this problem? They gave us the standard deviation for the population. That doesn't tell me, that, that tells me Z or T, but I don't even know if I could do anything yet. Oh, it's normal. How do I know it's normal? Um, yeah. So 
the one, n is 41, which is bigger than 30. 30. Tension limit theorem says normal enough. Now I can look at sigma or s. Which one do we know? And I made it really like crazy sigma. in your face. Yeah, so sigma known. So what are we allowed to use then? Z score. Z score, so. Okay, okay. So this is a, basically a Frankenstein monster of a lot of different things we learn this semester, correct? Each step is sort of like a different thing we discuss some other time in the semester. T score would not be a population, right? Exactly. Okay. It would be if I got the standard deviation from a sample, and that's why you gotta be careful when you read something. You're like, where did that standard deviation come from? Right? That's because that's crazy important now. last time. Now that we know it's a one-tailed test, this shows you why the t-score chart kicks so much ass. And why am I talking about the t-score chart? We just said z-scores. You guys should know that now, right? right? Why can we use the t-score chart? Because the bottom is larger. Yeah. Okay. And it goes all the way down to z-score. I love it. Z-scores live at the bottom. And it kicks ass because it's a one-tailed test. What's alpha? The amount in the tails. I love it. What is it? What is? What is it? What's the value here? 0.01, right? You guys see that? 0.01, one tail, all the way down. What is it? No, 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 stop. It's one tail. Alpha is the area in the tail or tails. Oh, so when you know it's only one, that alpha is only Yes, one. yes, okay. yes, I like it. I thought it was like the same thing. And that's really showing you, for confidence intervals, we sort of had the, you didn't really see why we had one tail, two tail options, right? But now you see why. Yes? Will it always give you alpha? They might not. <laughs> in which case, this is sort of similar to something else we did earlier. If they don't give you alpha, you assume it's a 0.05, because that's the most often used one. Okay. What was the most often used confidence interval? 95%, because that's what we defined unusual to be in the first place, right? So the most often used alpha is 0.05. Okay. Yeah. And it actually is true in the real world, too. Um, all right. So how do I, so the whole idea here is if 10.15, is the real mean. If 10.15 is the real mean, any sample I take should most likely show up in here, correct? Yes. If I get a sample that is here, that is a 1% chance of getting a sample here if that's in the right place. So what's more likely is the mean is not in the right place. There's a 1% chance I'm wrong in that case. Do you guys follow? No. Yes. I really want you to get this. If this mean is correct, what's the probability that I would get a sample here? 1%. 1% chance. If I do get a sample here, what's more likely? I just happened to get a sample that was crazy big? Or the actual mean for these coyotes is Bigger. Okay. That's more like. Yeah, so, is it that, so obviously you're trying to trace the mean, you think that you're trying to trace the mean, so it's that the sample of the thing that has a different condition or whatever, that mean is the one that Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're talking about, we know the mean for all coyotes in captivity. We have a claim about a subset of those. It's still a population. It's a population of all the coyotes that have more room to roam, correct? And our claim is the average of all those is bigger than the average of all coyotes. Right? You guys saw kind of, did We certainly didn't take every single coyote that has more room to roam. We took a sample of coyotes. And that's why I got to do the test, because by itself, it's just a sample. It's got variability in it. 
So I have to really meet the conditions of the test to be able to say, we have shown evidence. We've shown really good evidence because there's only one percent chance we're wrong if we get there. All right. So where does our sample have to show up again? To the right. It's got to show up up here, correct? Mm -hmm. Has somebody looked up what that z-score is yet? 0.01, one tail, z-score at the bottom, right? And you'll get your t-score chart. Uh, Say it, sir. Yeah, 2.326. Make sure you can find that. 2.326. So go to one tail, 0.01, and then go all the way down, right? I love it. So we have to find a sample to, to show evidence that the stick in the mud, null hypothesis, who thinks it's here, if we find it here, and what's another way to say that? If we find a sample whose z-score is more than this, then we can say the one who thought it was 1015 looks to be wrong. Does that make sense? If we find a sample so freaking far up there that it has a 1% chance of happening, if that's the right mean, then that's probably not the right mean. So here's how he says. I does everybody agree with me that uh, there's a z-score sitting on my paper already? 2.326, right? So what I do for myself, and I, I'm asking you to do this too, I call the z-score that we get from the sample, I call it z-star. You're gonna find out why I do. But there's already a z-score here, correct? Yeah. So if our z-score, we'll call it z-star. You see it down here. If that's greater than 2.326, we can reject the hope, support the hope, or reject the null, support the alternate, if you prefer, send back. Oh, okay. And again, that all goes together. Where does the null hypothesis thinks things are? Doesn't it think things are, it actually thinks things are over here, correct? Right, it's less than or equal to. So if we get there, that's evidence that guy's wrong. So that's exactly, if we get there, then we can reject the guy who thought it was over there, we can support the other guy that thought it was over there. Yet, we, we don't prove shit, do we? I love how this is so true to life. In a court case, if they're, if they're declared not guilty, does that mean they're innocent? No. No! It just means they were unable to find evidence that they were guilty. They could be innocent or guilty, we don't know. Okay. So part D is going to be probably the most familiar step. Can somebody tell me what did they find in the sample? What was X bar? 12.45. And to get Z star, we're gonna to have to know the standard deviation. What was the sigma? Four point two seven. And what is the sigma? We gotta change the standard deviation, right? Because we took a sample. And we're talking about sample means. So the new standard deviation is gonna be the old one divided by square root of
Now, the thing that might have escaped you guys, we go into this whole thing. The, the way this kind of works, I should have said this earlier, but we go into this thing assuming this is the actual need, and I've sort of been saying that the whole time, but not that directly. We're gonna assume 10.15 is the actual mean for our coyotes, and we're gonna to try to show it's wrong by contradiction. We're gonna be like, uh, we're gonna assume it's right, but look what we just did. I mean, if we get way the shit up there, we just did something that's really, oh, well then that can't be right. So we assume 10.15 is the right mean, right? So in our formula, isn't it always our data minus the mean? So this is always gonna be minus the number from the claim. It's always gonna be minus That number that we're kind of fighting against. And the claim is always going to be the um, the mean. The number that we used in the claim, assuming you picked the right one. Yeah. That's the number that's going to show up right there. But and this is always, sir. Will that number always be the mean? Yeah, you're going to assume that whatever you're claiming has changed. You're going to assume that's the real mean. So we assume that's the real mean, and then we do something, we get something over there, then that assumption must have been wrong. It's, it's called proof by contradiction. Okay. okay. Now, please, I know I'm talking a lot, but this, this step here is, should be very familiar. You just make it a z-score. Our data, that's what they found from the sample, correct? It's our data minus the supposed middle divided by the spread. Take away what, what's z score of 3.45? How do you feel about that just in general? It's pretty big, right? pretty damn big, right? Because unusual at least used to start always around two. No matter what you call unusual, 3.45 is freaking it's almost off the chart, right? Mm -hmm. So that immediately is like holy shit, that sample is way out there. And did we get past the benchmark? Yeah. We only had to get bigger than 2326. So, what are we able to do then? Support. Support what? Support ha. Support ha. And reject both. So I really want this to make sense. If I say reject the null and I say support the ha, I said the same thing twice. Because if I support the ha, that automatically means I'm rejecting the other dude because they're opposites, right? They don't like it. All right, let me stop for a minute. Done a lot here. So again, I don't want you to lose focus. There's a lot of steps. The most important steps are the third step, how far enough, how far away is far enough away? And then the fourth step, how far away did we get? Right? Those are the key steps. The other steps are important too. If you don't do that, you're screwed, but those are the most important steps. Would the steps be slightly different if it was a T score? No. Okay. Um, let's take a minute. Okay, the p value. I really want this to make sense. We already know the answer, correct? The p value gives us a little more insight. What the shit is a p value? It's just this. What, what's alpha? What's alpha? Uh, the amount uh, in the tail. Good. The area in the tail of what, what's called, I haven't used the name for this yet, but this is called the critical z-score. This one here. So you'll see that in the book, the critical z-score. I sometimes call it the rejection region z-score, whatever. It's kind of like the benchmark. You gotta get this far away to show evidence. Um, so alpha is the area in that z-score. The p-value is the area in the tail that our z-star makes. So what area? So watch this. Um, Dad, come in. Hold it. There we go. Come here. First thing is, 3.45 is there. So 
So now you can see there's the star in action. Yeah. So it's really, the visual is, holy shit. We are so far away from 1015. It can't be. I'll bet you anything that our, our curve looks more like this, maybe. Then the sample we found would not be so unusual. It would not be so far off. Now, what I want to know is, and don't worry about this, you're not going to have to draw the new picture because we don't know for sure, but what area is in this tail? What area is above 3, 4, 5? How do you find that? This is an old question. If you look up 3, 4, 5 in your z-score chart, won't you find the area below? Then can you find the area above? Point zero 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 three. Point zero 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 three. That sounds right. Does that look right to everybody else? You guys see that? That is the p-value. What that means is that is the probability that we would have gotten a sample where we did that far or further. So, I've been, I, so to introduce this topic, I talk about it from z-stores, of course, but now I can talk about it from probabilities. Alpha is the probability benchmark. We say anything less likely than this, we go, holy shit, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. So anything less likely than 0 0.01, we got 0 0.0003. So that is so unlikely to get a sample where we did, if 10.15 is the mean, 10.15 is probably not the mean, right? That is evidence that they do live longer. Maybe, maybe. Is there a chance that our sample just happened to get coyotes that live long? Yes, there's a chance. So what would have to happen then to, before we publish this? We need more samples. Yes, we need another group more than likely, hopefully, an independent group to do their own research, maybe even on a different area. And if they can show sort of the same thing, that's gonna, then it's like, holy shit, that's pretty good. All right, All right I like it. So that's the p-value. So the smaller the p-value, the more significant the findings. So when you hear somebody say statistically significant, that is what they're referring to. The p-value was smaller than some predetermined amount. In this case, 0.01. Yeah. Quick kind of off-topic question. Is any of the questions you use in the past chapters with the thing, are they like true data? Like, is, did you actually really pull it from somewhere, or is it completely made up? Oh, in the book? No, just in the book and like what you give I Have you guys noticed in my problems I try to give links to, you guys ever notice that? The, the links that are on, those are true. Yeah, I'm actually giving the link so you can get it if you want to. You can go type it in and go look at the data yourself. Uh, so if I don't include a link, either I was lazy and didn't include it, or I just made the shit up. Uh, but I do try to include links when it's actual data. And I love giving actual data because if I just make shit up, you're like, well, that's just you making shit up. Who cares? So I, I, I mean, I would feel the same way if I made all the shit up. Okay, obviously this one, hopefully you can all forgive me that I made this shit up, yes? This is a fever dream I had. Uh, but all we're worried about right now is just the mechanics of how this works. Now how the hell, now we gotta do this. Everybody's favorite part of any problem, our conclusion. Oh shit, I gotta check the time. Holy shit. All right, give me just a minute, guys. I got two people taking a test next door. And they're excited because they gave them like 15 extra minutes.
like a, a really small conclusion. Doesn't it make sense if we're like a statistical consultant firm, somebody comes to me with a claim, how should we communicate our findings to them? Shouldn't we communicate it related to their claim? They want to know how did my claim do? Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? They, uh, tell me what, what happened in the claim. So what was the claim in this case? Which one? The ho or the ha? Yeah, the ha was the claim. So therefore, I want to use this language, not this language. Please let that make sense. We want to tell people what happened to the claim, right? Somebody made a claim. Did it come out to look true? Did it come out to look false? So we have found found sufficient evidence to support the claim that, and with all the apologies to your English professors, plagiarize. You've got to put down here what the claim was. And why am I going to make you like reword it? Just go up, just freaking copy. What was the claim? The northern Minnesota coyote lives longer in captivity if they're given more room to roam. Bam! Write that shit down. So support the claim that the northern Minnesota coyote lives longer if given more room. You might even write it in English. Lives longer. Good Lord, Jeff. I have more than what language is this? If given more room. So, bah, bah, bah. Okay. so don't just say your conclusion is we found evidence to support the Hobbes. No, I mean, tell me physically what this shit just happened. So, I mean, if another. Go ahead. It's not like the whole thing. There's no problem. I know. Who cares? You could put numbers if you wanted to. But the conclusion, we kind of want it to be more English, because now we're talking to people, right? You could say, we found evidence to support the claim that the mean lifespan of coyotes in more room is more than 10.15 years, right? That would have been, I would have loved that. But you can also just do this. Yeah? So what would we put down if we rejected alternate and supported no? All right, you ready? All right. There's only two things that can happen. Either you get into the rejection region and you reject the null, support the hop, or you don't get into the rejection region and you fail to reject the null and you fail to support the hop. That's it. Okay. That's all that can ever happen, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. So if we fail, if I fail, then I would say we have not found sufficient evidence and then the rest of it, I word it exactly like I would normally depending on what the claim was. All right, so let's do this immediately, right now, before everybody curls up for a nap, which I understand. Now that I said that, I really want to do this. Take a nap here. Uh, let's do another one.
got the claim in Nappish? Nope. Remember, the claim is something we make before we take a sample. Do they think somewhere that it's more? Do they think somewhere that it's less? No, they think that it has changed. So not equal to. Not equal to. There you go. Do that on here too. Oh, you're tough. Yeah, take my job. Do not equal to. I'll tell you what. All right. I'm going to do this. Let's say it has stayed the same. Let's change that, right? Make that a change. I need to show you an example right now. There's another example on another worksheet I've got that we're probably going to make it, not make it to. I need to show you an example right now. Everybody with me? So let's say Ford believes the assembly time has stayed the same. So now that's really obvious it's going to be, they think the mean is still 38 hours, right? So that goes in health. Good, exactly. So that's the immediate thing. If I do too many examples where the claim goes in the hall, people just start to think, oh, the hall is the claim. No, 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 no. It, you totally have to stop. Is that an equal sign? Very much so. So it's got to go in for the hall. Right. So the claim can be either one. So what's the high? The high, let me change this. Does what's not it? equal 38. Yeah, now that's does not equal. Now how many tail tests do you think this is then? Two. Yeah, because how can you not equal 38? You can be more than, more than or less than. less than. In fact, we used to use this symbol Even writing that hurts me because math people, we don't like multiple symbols in a row. But that one was kind of less than greater than because then it's really in your face, it's two tails because it can go either way. So this will be a two tail test. Make whatever sound effects you want. Now, Do we use Z scores, T scores, or not? So what tells me I can do something? Yeah. Sample is 71, which is bigger than 30, right? Now what tells me which one Z or T? Yes. You don't know the population. Yeah, we don't know population. That, that standard deviation that gave us, that came from our sample, right? Okay, so that's just like number one in the quiz option. All right, sigma unknown, only know S, we use T scores. All right, so we got a two-tail test. What's alpha? Point zero five. Point zero five. Two tail test. I need T scores. So what else do I need before I can look this up? Degrees of freedom. What's that going to be? Seventy. Yes. Yeah, so go ahead and look up the T score. Don't say it yet. Be make sure I actually agree with that. Where'd it go? Yeah. Okay, I agree with that. 
It's a two-tailed test. So what do I actually put here and here? You put... I mean, does the T-score chart have any negatives on it? No. So but we know that negatives exist, so we're the humans. We know when to do it, so what's this? Negative one. Negative one, nine, nine, four. So where's our rejection region is actually two places, yes? Which kind of makes sense, because our sample could end up up or down and, and show evidence, right? So how do I put this into words? Did I do that before? I don't remember. Yeah, I did, great. So if, now be careful here now, what is it? If T star, right? If T star is less than negative 1994 or greater than positive 1994, right? It could either be far down that way or far down that way. What can we do then? If our sample gets more than that far away. We support the hoe. No, never support the hoe. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean it's, it's, it's kind of fun. All right. So, but uh, to turn that into a, a, a valid point, you never support the null hypothesis because a sample can never show evidence for equals. And what does a null hypothesis always have? Equals. equals. So you either reject it or you fail to reject it. Oh, so you, you never support it. Never support it. Okay. So you can, you can make that into a broader, anyway. Uh, so if I do get in there, then I can do what with the no? Fail to reject. No. What? So again, the null thinks, in this case, the null thinks it's equal to 38, yes? Okay. So the null thinks it's in here. So if we get out there, it looks like that guy is wrong. We can oh, reject well. it. Okay. Reject. I could have just did this instead of walk away with it. Oh. Which also at the same time means support the hop. If I reject the one dude, I can support the other dude. So I really want that to make sense. That is why we built this that way. The null has an equals. It's the one that thinks it's in the middle somewhere. So if I get away from the middle, I can reject that. Now, what's some um, stuff from the sample? What does my sample mean? 37.2. 37.2. What's my sample standard deviation? 2.25. 2.25. Now here's the part that trips people up. I still have to change this because that is a standard deviation of individuals. I need to make it into one that works for groups, right? So I don't give a shit if it's S or sigma, I still gotta do this. What was it? T-score formula is the exact same as the Z-score formula. Because fundamentally, they both mean the same thing. They really do. So thank the gods for that, right? So a T-star formula is the same. So it's our data, 37.2, minus the supposed middle, 38, divided by the spread, 0.267. Six 
So negative three. So again, I, I so this is where hash check needs to work on this, but uh, I should have made that one that failed because we already had an example that succeeded, but I kind of gave it away. Did we make it in there? Did we get far enough away? Yeah. Shit, yeah. Again, we sort of blew this away. And here's where I need you guys to understand. I'm never going to ask you to find the p-value for t-score. I really want this to make sense. Which one is more detailed, the t-score chart or the z-score chart? Z-score. Z-score for damn sure. If I wanted one equally detailed, I need the z-score chart size thing for every degree of freedom. So you don't have enough information to actually find the p-value. Technology will find it. I don't care. Right? So I'm never going to ask you to find the p-value for a t-score. Well, we already know the answer, right? What, what can we do because of this? What can we do with the null? Fail to oh. no. Did we make it? Yeah. So we we're succeeded. Gonna reject. We didn't fail to do anything. We reject this because <laughs> they think that the null thinks it's in here. We got out there. It's like that person's wrong. Okay. Support. Uh -huh. All right. So how am I gonna? Wouldn't your conclusion be to reject code because I was good? Okay? Our claim was the null. So our conclusion, so I would do exactly this. You, now, I really want this to make sense. The very first thing you worry about is the claim. And you don't give a shit about it. And the very last thing you worry about is the claim. So the minute you figure the claim out, you write that box you forget about the claim. You do the work, do the work. Now you care about, now you want to word it. The claim was the null. So I want to use this language, not this language. I always get people are like, when do I say support? When do I say reject? That's a nice kind of way to remember. You want to talk about the claim. So we have found sufficient evidence to reject the claim that Again, apologizing to my English colleagues, plagiarize, right? We have found sufficient evidence to reject the claim that, I don't know, the assembly time <laughs> has stayed the same for, oh, oh, there it is. We reject the claim that the Ford Focus assembly time has stayed the same. Show it to you in the wild, right? We're not going to go on a field trip. I'm sorry. I'm just going to look at the computer. What the shit just happened? Sorry. You pushed the wrong button, Jeff. There it is. Okay. So I found two studies real quick um, that were done in the last week. Uh, let me see. This one is about, this one's interesting. Analysis of health head tilting in dogs. So you're like, where's my tax? Where do you find these? Uh, what I do is I go to Google, I type in the word study, and then I restrict it to the last week. Oh. And then I get all kinds of studies. Unfortunately, for the last year and a half, of course, it's been about mostly COVID. I'm like, oh, good, there's a dog's head tilting for I love it. But I want to show you something here besides just the pictures of the two dogs. Um, let me see if I can find it again now. Doobie doobie doobie. So they have all this stuff. They're talking about what the experiments were. They're talking about how they got their dogs. And then they get to their analysis. And right here, what is, look at this. Whatever this is, whatever this shit is, and this is something in our future right here. This is what we're going to learn about very soon. But just look at this. What does this mean? Well, how do you feel about what that, whatever that finding is? What is that P less than 0.0001? Very small change. Very small chance that what they saw was random. Yeah. So that is a statistically significant finding. Whatever that thing means, that means that that is statistically significant. That is a, not just a random thing, it is an actual effect. Okay, I like it. 
Uh, oh, here, yeah, this is still degrees of freedom. Yeah. No, this is a kind of a different test, but the p-value always means the same thing, which is why I felt okay showing you this. This symbol right here, you're going to know it very soon. It's called chi-squared. So don't worry about it. Okay. The other one I got to show you, of course, has got to do with COVID-19. But I want to show you this one because it's got a lot more shit in it. Uh, when I say shit, I mean these Let me see. So down here, for example, what's this? I don't even know if you guys can see that. Can you guys see that? Where'd it go? 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 There it is. So this. Confidence interval. Holy shit, it's a freaking confidence interval. Out in the wild, this is the CBC doing this. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, I really, it's kind of like that question you asked earlier about how much of this shit are you making up, Jeff? Uh, and then down here, how would you guys feel about this p-value? Uh, 0.02. What do you think? I mean, it's it's more, uh, it's bigger than the other ones we were looking at. Sure. But it's not, I don't think it's made up to be random. Good. Yeah, 0.05 is like the standard one. 0.01 is getting kind of picky. So that's why, that's another reason why things like this give you p-values because then everybody can make up their own mind. How significant it is. Because they can have each have their own alpha. So in the wild, you don't get an alpha. You, you develop it yourself based on what kind of is evidence to you or what isn't. Does that sort of make sense? Mm -hmm. So. Say again, sorry. No, 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 be careful. The p-value has nothing to do with, with a level of confidence, really. Right? You've got to be careful. It's not really the same thing. So they didn't make a confidence interval. They did a hypothesis test. And they looked at the effect. You see, I don't know if we, I didn't really necessarily want to get into the, oh, God, what's that? Right. So this is basically about does vaccination protect you more or less than previous infections? Right, so a lot of the, I, I don't want to delve too much into uh, anti-vaxxers, but um, this shows that uh, blah, blah, it doesn't even say it very well, does it? Yeah, this shows that vaccination can provide immunity protection against subsequent blah, blah, blah. So previous infection with SARS or COVID-19 vaccine, so it's showing you that they both provide protection, but I think the idea is it comes out, the vaccine has more protection. Uh, I'm not sure, though. I have to look through it. There's one more thing I want to show you. I forgot where it was. There's a confidence interval. There's the p-value. I thought it was here. I'm not going to find it. I'm not going to you wait for me to find it. But somewhere in there they had um, p, they told you, P less than 0.0 something was what they considered significant. So the article could tell you what the researchers thought was significant, but then whoever's reading it can make up their own mind too. All right, that's enough. That's, that's so plenty. All right, so next time I'll have those uh, quizzes graded, and we'll keep going with hypothesis.